All right, so next up, we have an amazing video from the infamous Maddie Gilbert. If you guys know anything about Maddie Gilbert, oh, here he is. Maddie Gilbert's uh, stage right. It's an old video, but just to get people familiarized. Yeah, this is Maddie Gilbert. This is what he does. If you haven't seen him, I'm sure you've seen him around the con. If you haven't, this is an amazing video demonstrating what he does and a little bit about his cardistry. Everyone, round of applause, Maddie Gilbert. Wasn't that great? Once again, Maddie Gilbert. Hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. Uh, hey. Uh, so I'm Maddie, and I, I don't come from the world of cardistry. I come from the world of magic. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about what I'm doing and how it relates to what you guys are doing because I think it's very much related. Um, I started magic when I was maybe 13 years old. I would, I would watch Darren Brown and Darren, uh, David Blaine and I would see what they could do, especially David Blaine with cards and I always wanted to be able to do this stuff. And when I expressed these ideas to people, uh, all they did was laugh at me. They they told me that it was impossible, you know, that I don't have hands and that I should take up a hobby that is realistic, that I should do something that I can actually do. Um, so what I did, and this is for the Cardist people here who don't know anything about magic, I started out doing mind reading stuff, but when I was 16 years old, I, I had a little bit of success with that and I wanted to take it further because I wanted to do something that I considered to be actually impossible. So I started, I, I decided on my 17th birthday that I would learn how to do all these stuff with cards. And I didn't know how I was gonna do it and I didn't even think it could be done, but I knew that I had to do it. So what I would do is I would, I would uh, starting on my 17th birthday, I would sit up in my room all night in the dark and I would just practice. And the reason I practiced in the dark was because I didn't want anybody to feel bad for me. I didn't want anybody to, um, you know, look at me and say, here's this poor kid, uh, you know, sitting, playing with this deck of cards who's never going to be able to do anything. Uh, so I, I did it in secret and I would sit up all night and I would figure out how to do stuff. And at the beginning, um, I couldn't even hold the deck of cards. I couldn't shuffle, I couldn't cut. I, I really couldn't do anything with it. Um, but I would just, I, I, I knew that I had to do it. Um, it. It was just something that I couldn't give up on because I knew that if I gave up on the stuff with the cards and I should pretty much just give up on everything else I ever wanted to do in my whole life because this was something that I had determined um, that I wanted to do and I, I was going to see it through to the end. Whether, whether I succeeded or, or whether I failed, it didn't, it didn't matter to me. I actually thought that I, I would fail um, like that kid who keeps dropping cards all day. <laughs> 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 Um, 
but every every night I would practice, and slowly I I learned how to cut a deck. I learned how to shuffle a deck, and I don't do too much flourish um, flourishy stuff. But I I learned how to to do a lot of stuff, and I think that it's very much related um, to what you guys are doing. And what's amazing to me is a lot of the people in cardistry have gotten sort of the same reaction that I've gotten when I was first learning card magic. And I've been to conventions where, you know, there have been kids just sitting in the lobby of, of magic conventions playing with cards and doing, you know, cardistry and flourishes. And you have these guys who have been in, been in magic for 50 years who, you know, uh, are supposed to be experts, but they can't even hold a deck of cards properly. And they're telling these kids that they're completely wasting their time and that they're, they're, not, they're not doing anything good. Um, and what's, what's amazing to me is, is where, where I started and where I'm going is sort of where a lot of people with cardistry is going. I mean, I entered it not knowing where I was going and coming up, I mean, pretty much every single slight that I do in my, in my magic and with cards and all that stuff is completely unique. It's based on, on stuff that already exists, but it's stuff that I had to really work on to come up with on my own, and I was exploring this um, uh, almost uncharted territory. I almost felt like this, uh, this explorer just going into this dark unknown figuring out stuff, and it's the same thing with what I see with you guys. I see these videos coming up all the time that, um, I mean, you guys are figuring out new ways to rotate packets and, you know, um, grip cards and it, between fingers that I, I never even thought was possible. <laughs> and, and it's, I, and I think it's important, I, I think it's very important that we each do this stuff and we keep pushing um, stuff to new places because I, I really think that's, I, I think pushing yourself to do stuff that shouldn't be done and that nobody's ever done before is what life is all about. I think that we, we, we each have a responsibility to, to create a better world for the people who come during our time and and after us, and the only way that we can do that is to bring um, the situation that we are in into a better place, and that's by contributing to it with in a positive way. And that's what I see, you know, from the youngest kid here. I see kids here who are uh, <laughs> like 14 years old, and and um, you, you guys are all contributing. And um, I, I think it's very important. And also in terms of in terms of the movement and everything, I, I once heard something very beautiful, and I, it took me a long time to underst uh, understand it. But it was a it was like a old um, Chinese proverb, I think, and it was asking it was a, it was an old master a asked, asking his student why why does a song uh, why is a song of a bird so beautiful. You know, does a song, um, does a song come from the bird studying com uh, composition? Does a, does a song come from the bird being intelligent and understanding what it's doing? And the master is trying to teach his student that what the bird is doing is it's expressing itself, and that's sort of what the bird has inside is be beautiful, and um, what the bird creates is spontaneous and it's from its own uh, intuition and it's from its own inner life and it's cr doing a physical action to bring its inner world uh, to reality and th it's really beautiful because I, I I see a lot of that in the movement that you guys are doing. It's like every single time I see p people doing uh, flourishes and coming up with new stuff, it's like I can almost see your personality, and and it, it's 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 really beautiful to be able to take a part of yourself that's 
um, invisible and you can't really share it with anybody or it's very difficult to share it with everybody, but you're able to, to practice um, a sequence of, of movements and come up with stuff to express yourself in a way that, that reveals um, a, a part of your true nature to, to the world. And um, getting, getting back to what, what I do, uh, that's, how, that's how I felt about my magic. And uh, all the stuff that I wanted to do, I had a lot of things that I wanted to express, ideas and, and, and feelings. And that's what I tried to create through, through, my, through, my, um, through my magic and through the movements that I'm doing. And that's what musicians do. They create symphonies that evoke emotions and people they want to tell stories and I think that you can tell a story through movement um, the movement that you guys are making I think there's stories in all of them and I think it's incredibly beautiful and important and and real and honest and I, I just want to keep seeing it happen more and more and it's it's amazing because I didn't I mean I always knew what cardistry was but this is Sort of my first cardistry con, I was at the first one, but seeing everybody in the room so passionate about something that a lot of people might not understand from the outside uh, is really special. And seeing the connection between people and, you know, the evolution of ideas, I think is very important. And, um, and the reason I, I'm, I'm saying all this and... I mean, if you get nothing else out of what I'm saying, it's that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I was, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, was a, I was a kid from Canada who, who couldn't do anything and who had all these things that I wanted to express and I didn't know how to express them, but I was learning how to, to, to push these limits and it, uh, it's really special to come here to to see people who are sort of doing what I'm doing and it and it makes me feel like uh, for all these years I was alone in a way coming up with this stuff and coming here shows me that I'm not alone and there's people who are still pushing to do stuff and pushing to create stuff that's beautiful in this world so I, I want you to um, to know that I'm very happy to be here with all of you and and thank you very much, and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Well, Maddie Gilbert, that was amazing. Thank you.